there, guys. I didn't see you there. Whoa, you guys all ready to go on another adventure with me? This time we're going to Vancouver. I'm getting a new leg, so we're gonna go through that whole adventure. So let's get going. Hey everybody, my name is Andrew Adley. After a workplace accident, I was left as a bump knee amputee. I had a decision to make. Get busy living or get busy dying. Obviously, you only have one life, so I made a decision to get busy living, exploring every opportunity that is presented to me. Tune in every week for different adventures, both from accessibility standpoint to adventures with my family and friends. And every adventure begins with one leg at a time. The function of the genium for me is amazing. It allows me to do so much. There are no boundaries for me. Except the price tag of $100,000 plus. Well, hey there guys well if you guys haven't figured out this week i'm going to vancouver for a new prosthetic knee now i'm just going to take off the the one i've got right now so this part here is a microprocessor knee now i always get lots of questions oh it makes you walk it makes you makes it easier well all it does inside is it's got hydraulics so what the hydraulics do is they release the fluid. So the faster you release the fluid, the faster the knee is gonna go. It also has got computer sensors, so when you're going down, down hills, I call it riding, but you sit on the knee and you ride it down. It, it slows the pressure down, it makes the knee break a lot slower. This knee is phenomenal. But, like I said in the video, the price tag is ridiculous also. Now, I make jokes about it, but I am so thankful for WorkSafe because without WorkSafe coverage of my accident, I, I, I don't know what me and Lisa would do. So this is, this here is a loner leg. So I had one previous to that and it broke when I was doing that 1948 Heritage Cabin um, rebuild. Links in the video. Um, 
and I went to send it in because you know normally I send it in and they send it to Germany and they give me a loaner one and they they fix it and they send it back and no big deal so I went to send it in they're like it's out of warranty I'm like oh my god so winter is the time that I use this the most here in Canada we get lots of snow lots of ice and ice for amputees is a very very tough thing because we can't correct our knees sliding on ice so I'm like oh no what am I gonna do so they put in for funding which I knew I knew based off the history of WorkSafe that it would eventually get funding but it's a big ticket item so I knew it would take time and I wrote to my prosthetist Leah which I put in the video before and I said, well, what am I going to do? And she tried to get a loaner one, couldn't get one. And then finally she arranged a loaner leg, which is this leg right here. So this leg, believe it or not, WorkSafe is renting this leg for me for $750 per week. So I've had it for probably about a month and a half, maybe two months. So that's $6,000 Canadian that we paid towards rental. Well, now I finally got the funding for it so I can get the leg. So that's what, what I'm on this trip to get done. Now the leg has an app and I'll put it up on the screen here. It's an I, iPhone or Android app that you can put on your phone and you can set the mode. So if I'm like biking, well, I can set the, the resistance to be a lot easier or running. You can have a little bit of resistance. It's called a golf mode, a ping pong mode, dance mode. Um, Another kind of cool thing it does is it's called extended stand. So I can lean against the wall and it'll lock the knee in like a 45 degree angle and keep me from falling down. So it's like a, a resting stance or it's even got a peg leg so I can lock it straight so I can't fall. That's why this knee is so useful, especially this time of year. Now it is a heavy, heavy knee. Like this is not a light knee, but for what I use it for, for, you know, out in nature, um, anything that's going downstairs, hills, um, it's phenomenal. Now, if I'm just going to the grocery store, I might take my lighter hy a hydraulic knee, which is a lot cheaper, but it allows me to fall if I have uneven surfaces. Now, the knee in that video I just showed you, this comes in two different levels. So it comes with a Genium, just a regular Genium or a Genium X3. Now the Genium X3 is a waterproof knee. Now it was built for a military veteran, so it's military standard of being built. Unfortunately, I can't get the funding for that. So I've got just a regular Genium, which is every has everything else. It just doesn't have the waterproof feature, which it would be nice to have, but I can't really justify it with WorkSafe. Like I don't work. I don't work in wet conditions. Yeah, I'd love to swim in it, but I do have a swimming leg too. So I'll go through this, this, the different sets and how she sets it up with her computer and we'll go from there. Thanks for joining me. Hey guys, well we just went through the, um, I guess it was the old toll booth, the Brick Creek area. You can see the roads are pretty snowy and icy. They're not terrible, the speed limits are down to 80 in here. And there's plows working everywhere as you can see in the camera. It's kind of see, nice to see the winters come. Not really happy about the timing, but at least it's come and it'll help us for water situation. But holy geez, it's beautiful and scary all at the same time.
Well, hey there, guys. Just had a quick bite to eat here at Subway and just heading next door to see Leah. So as you can see, I'm pulling all my legs. There's a problem with that warranty from that foot that I released a couple weeks ago. So they're trying to figure out if it's under warranty or not. So they want me to bring all my legs. That's the loaner leg that I'm using. That's about $750 per week. I mean, it's, it's expensive, but honestly, with winter, I would be really hard pressed to find a leg that will keep up to this. Sorry, it's pouring rain here in Vancouver. Lots and lots of traffic. There's the clinic there, Barber's Prosthetic and Clinic. And I'm just, there's Shrek over there, just parked next door and I'm just walking in. So there's an animal hospital next door and I guess the parking in this neighborhood is terrible. So I park next door. I need the exercise. So we're walking down this hallway. Looking forward to getting this whole thing solved. I mean, it's kind of been a rigmarole since probably October. So what's that, five months? So it's, it's been a while. So here we go into the clinic. I'm already getting the looks through the window. Like who brings a hockey bag in and a camera, but whatever. So here we go. Hello. Hello. Good. He was good. There's Leah. <laughs> Gotta blog the whole thing. I've never read her. I met the Hector the Collector last time, right? The bill collecting lady. Lauren. Lauren's the Hector. <laughs> Mrs. Hector the Collector. <laughs> and Camus is a guy that repos vehicles. His name's Hector. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's like anybody that's bill collecting, they're Hector the Collector. And I owe you a foot, so I'm like, oh no. <laughs> this is from this nice new day. one. This is broken already. <laughs> sorry. I used my legs. I'm sorry. <laughs> that broke on the Coke today. Oh, okay. I fell out of the truck and it broke on the ground, so. I'm like, this is it. That there is fifty thousand dollars, fifty-four thousand dollars. <sighs> Leah only gets one hundred and sixty dollars of that. <laughs> I saw Leah's bill. I'm like, hmm, I'm gonna suck that one hundred and sixty dollars up probably this week. Okay, so. There's this one, and that's where that piece fell off of. Okay. That's got the new foot that you just did. Okay. So I don't think it's that one. That's the foot that broke. Okay. Be careful, because the carbon fiber is yeah. really sharp. Okay, maybe I'll just don't chuck it, because I, I want to, yeah. I use all this stuff after for examples. What's that for? Pause. Who's that guy? I know Leah, but who's this guy? Well, Andrew from the past, this is Dave Moe. Dave Moe owns Barber's Prosthetics and has done since 2005. He's the second generation of prosthetists in his family. He's kind of a big deal in the world of legs in BC. This is actually a cuff. It's going to go around. It's going to attach to the leg. And I'm going to wrap this around and belt it on. Why? Pull the leg up. We don't usually use this, but it's kind of an old style. So you're not using suction, you're not using pin. So that's skin on socket. Well, where the sock is in your face. He's I gotta say, I love this back area with all these old legs. It's so awesome. You know how many comments I got on that metal one up there? There was like so oh, many yeah. people writing about that thing. I don't remember I asked you. It was like 1950s leg. Like, yeah. how heavy is that thing to wear? Really? But it's, it's just a little bit wrapped around. And that's an actual, is that? That was a leg. That, is that a joke? No, that was someone's leg. That was real. Someone wore that. So, so that what's. That one right there is metal too, the, the short one with the leather on top. On the right or the left? This one here. So this one here. 
there's so many things about this one that piss me off. Um, Did you build that? Oh, Look. Oh, this is 53. Dude, I wasn't even on the earth. Holy cow. So you got to understand where that technology of that leg that you're on the wall is. How heavy is that thing? A, a different animal now. This one, right? It's but wooden still, foot. All metal. So it's, there's nothing to them, right? They're thin. So, but... <laughs> what returns it then? Oh, okay, so this is going to come up. Oh, this is the elastic, elastic band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that it flexes, and we call it an extension. So this is assist. after, like, Terry's leg, because Terry had one down the middle, right? Oh, shit. This is 1953, dude. Terry Fox isn't even born yet. That's crazy. Like, would they, they have worn it? this and say the property of the Canadian government on your leg? Oh, this would be a work safe one. Seriously. That's even cooler. And they put this on it. And like from May of 53. You wonder if that serial number is still somewhere in Canadian government system. I, I doubt it. I For doubt more it. of Day's collection and the history on legs and how they, all the legs work, I created a second video. Here's the thumbnail of what the video is. It's labeled as part two of this video series. Now back to picking up the genium, doing all the adjustments for that leg. Look quickly. See? This one's higher. It's higher. Now, what height is that set for? A little lower. How much is low? Uh, over a centimeter. A centimeter is what? Like Quarter almost, inch? Yeah. Yeah. One centimeter is three inches. So, yeah. So, it's probably about... So, it's like Dave was just talking about. I, I, said, it, I said an inch, I said too high, and you're like... Because because in my world, an inch is not like nothing, nothing. you know, and your world, it's like, <laughs> that's like, like having to buy a brand new thyroid. So when Leah's <laughs> tuning stuff in for new legs, a normal person would think, okay, eighth, eighth of an inch is really close. Eighth of an inch is almost four millimeters. In Leah's world, that's a lot. So can you imagine the fine tuning that needs to be done, especially for a computerized leg? So all the settings are the same. I put them exactly the same as your like original one. Before the loaner, before everything. Oh, this is from Ricky. Yes. Why is this why is this fitting weird? Like my my skin is actually touching the socket. That my liner is touching the socket. Not that it matters, are I don't care. Where? On the the inside or the outside? Right here. Oh, yeah. Like it's touching. Do you need to re put your liner on? I'll maybe? try it, but I just pulled it off. So, earlier on in the video, I was showing the three different types of ways to keep a socket onto the body. So, I am, am a suction. So, I have a liner that's like a wetsuit, and then on the end of the liner is a big ring, and that creates suction to keep my leg on. Now I also do have a little belt on the front of it that ratchets it just as a safety precaution to keep my leg on because I have had it break suction and fall off. Um, there is people that go skin on socket, so that's basically skin holding together. And then below knees use a lot of pin. So there's a pin that comes out of their liner and clicks on their leg, just like earlier in the video we we're talking about. Oh, it is I'm wondering. Down. No, but I'm wondering if I sink better. I think this is my good socket. And this one has the air pocket. I use alcohol based hand sanitizer as a lube to put my leg on. It just helps the liner slide into the socket. The they've been, inject so they've been injecting it for probably two years and it's so painful. Like I'm pounding the wall when I get yeah. Um, when they did the cryogenic, it was like a bee sting. Mm. And it was like phenomenal. But then it lasted a month. Yeah. Um, so I still feel like I'm sinking. Like a soft maybe or something? Like now, yeah. <laughs> oh, really? I thought, I'm saying I like it. I can move it out. I like it. <laughs> like it feels way better to you? Oh yeah, world difference. This is like 
it feels good. A world I mean, different. It's, it's, it like it's exactly. it's light again. It's like okay, before it was sweet. good. I'm glad to hear it. But you're I saying I'm sinking. Shoes too. This is so I bought new again. shoes because I thought, well, yeah. Leah doesn't want to see me come in in muddy shoes again. Yeah. You know what we tell our patients? You never build a house on a crappy foundation. <laughs> so we're fitting you with the leg and we're doing That's the same thing we say with tires on cars. You don't start on cheap, shitty tires on a car. I never worked at Cow Tire. Because that's the biggest problem that we have when we're trying to fit legs is they come in with crappy shoes. Or the worst is when they're brand new amputees and they bring in the shoes that they beat up with their real foot. Yeah. And now the inside of it's the shoe is not a Because the surface. camber's out. And then, it, well, who knows, could be cast or it could be, yeah. who knows, depends how you walk, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you've got the shoes that are like this, and then they change the shoes, and then the legs yeah. totally screwed, right? And then so you guys are chasing, sense. trying to do adjustments, but... Well... See, I brought these shoes just for you, <laughs> because I'm like... Well, I personally didn't bring my boots, and I'm like, if I got stuck on the Coke today, I was going to blame you. Hey, guys. Well, I wanted to conclude this video here... I think I'm actually going to do three parts with this series. Um, this part, and then I've already released one that with Dave going through the history of legs. So that may or not be for everybody. I thought it's pretty cool. And Dave's stuff's been in the museum, Vancouver Museum. So he's probably highly credited. And then I'll do one last video on all the adjustments on this leg. This is a very, very, very expensive leg and there's tons of adjustments and I wanted to um, show how intricate it is and how it all works both for for the amputees out there but also for the general public so thanks very much for going on today's journey uh, the next video will be the history and then I'll do one last wrap up video on the Leah setting all the legs and how that all works so thanks so much have a great day